be opened. It's my favorite scriptural passage, and I bet you've never heard of it. Because it appears in the lectionary after the Seraphonician woman in the same week, and so but nobody reads it. Be opened. Before Jesus speaks those words, he tells everyone, he tells everyone that there is nothing that you take in that will make you bad, unclean, unworthy. It's what comes out of you. What you do, your actions, your speech, that will make you unclean. And then someone challenges him about it. A foreigner, a woman, says, did you really mean that? Then you need to heal my daughter. And he says no and calls her a nasty name. And she begs and pleads until he heals her daughter. And then comes my scripture. In this scripture, Jesus says, be open. There's a man brought to Jesus by his friends after he has healed a foreign woman and decides to open up the ministry to the world that is not part of the Jewish nation. As he travels around the Decapolis, friends bring a man to him who's deaf and mute. Who's deaf and mute, and he says, as he tries to heal them, well, it's a very gritty kind of healing. He has to spit in his hands and poke in his ears. And then he says, Epitha, be open. But here's the thing about the Gospels. Sometimes a story is written because it's a story that was told about Jesus, about what he did and how he lived his life. And sometimes those stories are placed where they were because the writer of the Gospel wants you to hear them embody them and take the story forward. And so when Jesus says, be opened, he changes the gospel at that moment. It goes from being a gospel for Jewish people to being a gospel for the world. It goes from being for a particular people, his people, to being open to what comes next. And what comes next is deeply problematic. Because in this point in Mark's gospel, as Jesus starts healing and feeding people around the world, he starts losing his disciples until at the very end, they desert him, deny him, betray him, and flee from him. And that's how the gospel ends. But Mark said, be opened, because he wanted you, you the hearers of the text, you the hearers of the gospel, you the hearers of the story, to take over what happens next. When everybody else has left him, you are invited to be open and follow him. Be open. What does that mean for us here? What does it look like for us to be open? As I think about those words, those words that I use as a breath prayer before I come and visit someone, those words I use before I have to speak, those words that guide me, be open. Those are words that you didn't know you heard when your pastors all started working together trying to create a community from three different roots. And what we are doing as a community is something new. Do you know every time I tell people about us in the larger church, they get excited by our project, our ministry, our hope. Because they all speak about the promise of being welcome to everyone. And we're trying to live it, right? In a reality where we have to figure out what it means to incorporate each other's cultures, each other's language, each other's understanding of the gospel. And those words be opened are needed by all of us because there's times when I'm gonna totally rub you the wrong way because I messed up the word, I did a different theology, and sometimes I won't understand the culture I've come up against because it's not part of what I knew. 
But if we use those words, be open, we can experience that culture. Hear it and see it and know and figure out a way it can be part of the us, not the separate eyes. Be open. What does that mean when we look at who we will become? One of the things we are going to try this year on, we haven't figured it out completely, but one Sunday a month, we are going to gather together to talk about the things that are important. What does it mean about how we worship together? What does it mean about who we are in mission? What does it mean about what scriptures motivate us? We're going to ask questions and talk to our roots and talk to each other to try to figure that out. And if we let those words be open, guide us, will what we come up with be better than we could have thought of on our own? Be open. I think about that when I think about our back lot, right? So I had a vision of what I see happening back there. But then Yanni came along and said, how about this? And I said, sure, we can see if it happens. But I will share with you that I have a vision for the back lot. Be open. What happens if our back lot becomes a sacred grove, a micro forest and a native plant garden where people can come and experience the presence of God? What happens if we take our mission and see ourselves as opened up to the AAPI community here in the Bay Area, here in the Philippines, here in Samoa, and take that as our mission, as something that we can get behind that will change who we are and how we act. So I want you to think about those words, be open. Be open for what's coming. Be open to the presence of God in our midst. Be open like that man who needed to have his ears dug out because until Jesus got in there and got all that gunk out of his ears, he couldn't hear. And because he couldn't hear clearly, he was not able to speak clearly. And when he was able to speak clearly, he shared the word of God far and wide, letting it be known what Jesus had done. So my challenge to us this year is to be open. Amen.